She was a great pianist and, of course, the greatest singer of her time, Aretha Franklin, known as the Queen of Soul, dead at the age of 76 from pancreatic cancer. She was a singer, songwriter, a piano prodigy. The cultural icon was also a civil rights activist who helped to break down barriers. NBC's Lester Holt takes a look back at the life and legacy. There has never been a voice like hers. And there may never again be anyone like her. Aretha Franklin, the queen of soul, an icon of American music. No other female singer was as celebrated or as honored as Aretha Franklin. 18 Grammys, 20 number one Billboard singles, 45 songs in the top 40. Our nation honors Miss Aretha Franklin. In 2005, she received the Presidential Medal of Freedom, a deeply emotional moment for the singer who had been honored previously by President Clinton with a National Medal of Arts and by the Kennedy Center. Franklin was a diva and she made no bones about it, but she was also a trailblazer for women and an African-American artist who achieved success against the backdrop of the civil rights movement. of firsts goes on forever, like being the first woman to be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. She used her voice to crash through barriers. I can't treat it on the Rolling Stone once ranked Aretha Franklin the number one greatest singer of all time. She had an almost maternal attitude toward her own songs. I sing. They're like my children. I love them all. Um, but there are some that I, I liked a little more than others. Respect, certainly, the freeway, jump to it, natural woman. Millions of Americans know her music by heart. All we need to hear is the first few notes. We know the rest. All because she showed the way and set the standard. Joining me now is NBC's Ron Mott at the New Bethel Baptist Church in Detroit, which was Aretha Franklin's church. It's where her father preached and was a great civil rights leader. And um, you have a guest. You have a, a well-known guest and a great friend of Aretha's as well, the Reverend Jesse Jackson. Ron? Yeah, hey there, Aretha. Excuse me, Andrea, good day to you. This is a sad day, obviously, for the world, especially the folks here in Detroit. We, we've got the Reverend Bob Smith, who replaced C.L. Franklin, Aretha Franklin's dad, as pastor of New Bethel. The Reverend Jesse Jackson just showed up. Reverend, you were with the family and with Aretha in these final hours. What did you say to comfort them? We, we prayed with Aretha twice yesterday. Uh, we just have to feel the warmth of her hands and kiss the forehead one more time. We've known Aretha for 60 years. New Bethel is her work. She, she never left her work. I remember her father, you must know her father to preach it. For long, she was just Seal Franklin's daughter, a renowned preacher, recording artist. And one Sunday, he said, Let my daughter sing, Aretha. She sang, Never, Lamb will never grow. And she'll never grow to uh, Alba Maria, uh, to never love the man, the whole range of music for 60 years. We never had a day in our lives without some Aretha in our lives. And she was singer and servant. People care that you know, they want to know that you care. The kids you have, they want to know that you share. And so Aretha had a conduct a revival of Father's Church everywhere, right? That's she right. Revival. Three she, nights. She, she did a um, annual Christmas party down, downtown for the people. She never left the woods. Reverend, when you and I were just talking about how you know she cut a couple of gospel albums for early in her career and then moved into what people consider more secular music, went all over the world. She's an international star, but you say she never left New Bethel. Well, like I say, her father says she's just a stone singer and she never left the church. All of her songs are good songs about the emotions, the hardships, and the feelings of people. Everything was from her soul. No bad advice in any song. Everybody wants respect, and uh, I guess most women will tell you, I don't want nobody to hang around me and my man. <laughs> there is a <laughs> thing. People talk King, a lot about Dr. Dr. King was in, in real travail because of the taxing of Vietnam War and the Vietnam War. 
the big march in Detroit, you see the big march on Washington, led by her father, the chairman of the Human Rights Commission, or Human Relations Commission. He gave, I have a dream speech in Detroit, for giving it in Washington. So it's a call, the, 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 the labor movement in Detroit has been roots in our civil rights struggle. Uh, and when Dr. King had a really hard time from 66, 67, she did an 11-city tour. Married by the point of raising money to pay CLC. For, for, for free, that kind of giving it. We got, we got to Houston, there was so much hostility for Dr. King until they put a, when she went on the stage, Dr. King to give her flowers, they put tear gas in the fans, we had to evacuate the building. Uh. She was just singing the next night. I mean, she was a freedom fighter. She had, uh. the, she had the softness of the diva, but her heart was in the common people. Right, she was she was a force, obviously, Andrew. I believe mean, you might have Congressman Willis with one hand, send it back to you. And thanks to you, thanks so much, Ron Maud, and of course to the reverends. And joining me now, another reverend, Al Sharpton, of course, host of Politics Nation, right here on MSNBC, and president of the National Action Network, and of course, a dear friend of Aretha Franklin's. And Roland Martin, the host of TV One, also a friend of Aretha's. Uh, reverend Al, let me ask you first, uh, the importance of her influence on music, unquestionable. Let's talk also about civil rights and the role she played there. I think that uh, she was certainly one that brought the gospel flavor mainstream. I mean, people all over the world uh, would feel this kind of passion and grounding of gospel music that she got out of her father's church, and it would move them. You never saw her do a concert that she didn't also do a gospel song and sometimes break out into what we call a holy uh, dance or shout. Uh, but she was also committed to the movement. Uh, as was just stated, she did concerts to help Dr. King uh, in the 60s make payroll, but she went all the way to her dying day uh, supporting causes. She would call me on my radio show. She would call me privately and talk about the issues of the day. I, I remember uh, during the Eric Gardner police case here in New York, she came to my birthday party to make a statement that she was with the movement and she comforted the family of uh, Eric Gardner. She was not one to lead a march, but she would support them. She broke barriers. I, I will never forget the funny story, Andrea, is she called me one day a couple of years ago, said, Red Mal, what's your home address? I want to send you something. And she sent a check for Nash Action Network. And uh, I told her about a month later, I said, you know, I framed that check because you signed it. She said, boy, you better put that check in the bank. <laughs> Haven't you ever heard of how to copy a check? You can, you can frame the copy. But she never stopped being involved in movements. She was grounded. She was the tallest tree in the musical uh, kind of forest. But she never left her roots. And that's the legacy that she would want people to know. And of course, the huge influence of her father and his tragic death uh, during a, a, a robbery. I mean, he was such a major force in the civil rights movement. Uh, there's a quote from Mary J. Blige from Rolling Stone magazine that I love, uh, where he, he, she wrote, put Ms. Franklin at the top of its, to, uh, rather it was the top of the Rolling Stone uh, 100 greatest singers of all time. And in tribute, Mary J. Blige wrote, Aretha is a gift from God. When it comes to expressing yourself through song, there is no one who can touch her. She is the reason why women want to sing. Roland Martin, that makes me think about Natural Woman and uh, maybe my favorite song. Well, it was interesting. We talk about her music. Uh, I was on the phone with um, a fellow journalist driving here, and she said the reason people are so sorrowful is because she she reminded you of where you were when you were a child. So when the music was played, it was a family reunion or when I was getting ready for school or my parents were dropping you off at school or th this was happening. And, uh, uh, and one of the things that she said was that for her father, he had all of her albums. He came from the West Indies and, and he revered her music. And so uh, when you hear the phrase, the soundtrack of our lives, you start thinking about the moments where you were when you were seven and nine and 12 and 15 and 18. And then you think the multi-generation. I remember uh, my niece, Faith, 
uh, was just, just listening to Aretha Franklin music. And she was like, oh my God, I love her. And so I text Aretha. I said, Aretha, uh, my, at the time, Faith was probably 12. And I said, my niece, Faith, loves it. She hits it back. She said, you know, uh, I'm so happy to hear another generation loving my music. And, and that's how she was. You could go to a concert and you saw three generations of people listen to the same person. Very few artists have the ability to have an effect on people emotionally multiple generations. That's how special she was. And speaking of that, to your exact point, John Legend tweeting, salute to the queen, the greatest vocalist I've ever known. Uh, Paul McCartney tweeting, let's all take a moment to give thanks for the beautiful life of Aretha Franklin, the queen of our souls, who inspired us all for many, many years. She will be missed out the memory of her greatness as a musician and a fine human being will live with us forever. Love, Paul. You explain that. You gotta, Andrea, we've got, we don't realize people, stars like them, would revere her. They would walk in her presence and say, Queen, how are you? That's, people like that. Well, speaking of legends, on the phone right now joining us is Congressman John Lewis, of course, an icon of the civil rights movement, of politics, and a friend of Aretha's. and. Uh, yeah, I think, Congressman Lewis, about Aretha Franklin singing at Martin Luther King Jr.'s funeral. Tell me your memories. Well, I remember uh, Aretha just doing what she could do best, to tell the story through music, through song. She had the capacity, the ability uh, to lift you. Uh, to make you feel better when sometimes you were feeling down. She was so wonderful, so, so gifted. I saw her on so many occasions in Atlanta, uh, in Washington, in New York, uh, in Detroit, and other places around the country. And I will never forget on one occasion, I will never forget, it was August 1967, Dr. King was having a convention in Atlanta, and Aretha was performing, and she got happy, and she just kept singing. She wouldn't stop singing. <laughs> and so Dr. King had one of the staff person to go and tell Aretha, we have to cut it out. We have to end the program. And that was the last performance that Dr. King witnessed of Aretha. He loved Aretha. He loved her father, Reverend C.L. Franklin. They both were very supportive of him and supportive of the movement. And I remember on occasion when we were coming out of jail in Selma or other places in the South, and we would have a quarter, and we'd go and get a, a, one of these machines and play three songs of Aretha Franklin, uh, like respect, give me a little respect. But she made us feel good. And uh, she would be deeply missed. I love Aretha. You know, Congressman, what Roland Martin sitting here with me was just saying, and we've been talking to Al Sharpton, uh, is how she crossed every generation and every musical uh, genre. She just was a universal force of nature. Well, she had that ability from starting singing in a father church as a, as a young girl and then learning to sing uh, some not just rock and roll and, and blues and, and country she did it all and she made us all feel good she lifted our hearts and lifted our souls uh if it had been for aretha franklin and, and and her music as i said on many occasions the civil rights movement would have been like a bird without wings well, Congressman John Lewis, thank you at this moment to call in. We really appreciate it. Uh, we wish you well today at this time because it's uh, also a time of joy to mm -hmm. celebrate a great life, a life well lived. Uh, Reverend Al, some final thoughts from you? I think that Aretha Franklin was the one that gave the soundtrack to the growth of America from Jim Crow days in the South when she started to singing on the steps of the Capitol for the first black president of the United States inauguration. The soundtrack of that journey was Aretha Franklin, bathed in the church that never, ever stopped bringing heavenly thoughts and music to those of us 
on the ground. Well, we thank you all, Roland Martin, Reverend Al. Our thanks, of course, to Ron Mott and Congressman Lewis. And we want to bring you more of Aretha Franklin at the funeral of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. in April of 1968. And I know you're richer than a pig Because when 